Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In this video, we will learn that how to determine the kinematic indeterminacy of a beam. First, we will learn the method to find the kinematic indeterminacy of a beam. And then we will solve the, some questions on this to better understand the concept. First, the definition of the kinematic indeterminacy. Kinematic indeterminacy is defined as number of unknown joint displacements or degrees of freedom which are required to be known to proceed with the analysis of the structure. It is given as total possible degree of freedom minus number of available support reactions which generate as a result of restrained joint displacements. Kinematic indeterminacy of a beam is given as dk is equal to 3j minus r plus summation of m prime minus 1 where j is the number of joints R is the number of reactions and M prime is the number of members meeting at an internal hinge. Determine the kinematic indeterminacy of the following structures. The beam first is shown. Always remember that in kinematic indeterminacy, we take both internal hinge as well as the free support as the joint. So we can see in this beam there are three reactions that is one at this roller and two at this pinned end and there are three joints that is one, two and three and there is no internal hinge present in the beam so M prime is equal to zero. Therefore putting values of R, J and M prime in the equation we get the value of DK equal to six. It means that beam has six degrees of freedom if actual deformations are neglected, we can see that this beam has one member. So dk will be 6 minus number of member, which is 1. So it will be 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. For beam 2, we can see that there are four reactions in the beam and four joints. That is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there is one internal hinge present in the beam so number of members meeting at this internal hinge are 2 so m prime will be equal to 2 the value of dk will be equal to 9 it means that beam has 9 degrees of freedom if actual deformations are neglected we can see that this beam has two members so dk will be 9 minus 2 which is equal to 7 for beam 3 we can see that there are four reactions in this beam five joints and two internal hinges and number of members meeting at both internal hinges are two so m prime will be two and two the value of dk will be equal to 13 it means that beam has 13 degrees of freedom there are two members in the beam if actual deformations are neglected dk will be 13 minus 2 which is equal to 11. for beam 4 we can see that there are three reactions in the beam there are three number of joints in the beam and there is one internal hinge m prime will be equal to the value of dk will be equal to seven it means that beam has seven degrees of freedom there is one member in the beam so if we neglect the actual deformations dk will be seven minus one which is equal to six for beam five we can see that there are four reactions in the beam three joints that is one 2 and 3 and there is one internal hinge at the top of this roller so m prime will be 2 as there are two members meeting at this internal roller the value of dk will be equal to 6 it means that beam has 6 degrees of freedom if we neglect the actual deformation there are two members in the beam so dk will be 6 minus 2 which is equal to 4 for beam 6 we can see that there are five reactions in the beam four joints and there is one internal hinge in the beam so m prime will be equal to the value of dk will be equal to eight it means that beam has eight degrees of freedom we can see that this beam has two members so if actual deformations are neglected dk will be eight minus two which is equal to six for beam seven we can see that there are five reactions in the beam three joints and one internal hinge so m prime will be equal to the value of dk will be equal to 5 it means that beam has 5 degrees of freedom there is one member in the beam so 
if we neglect the actual deformation the value of dk will be 5 minus 1 which is equal to 4 for beam 8 we can see that there are 5 reactions in the beam there are 6 joints that is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and there are two internal hints in the beam and number of members meeting at both the internal hints are 2 so m prime will be 2 and 2 the value of dk will be equal to 15 it means that beam has 15 degrees of freedom we can see that this beam has three members so if actual deformations are neglected dk will be 15 minus 3 which is equal to 12. for beam 9 we can see that there are six reactions in the beam there are four joints and two internal hinges. Number of members meeting at both the internal hinge are two. So M prime will be two and two. The value of TK will be equal to eight. It means that beam has eight degrees of freedom. There is one member in the beam. So if actual deformations are neglected, DK will be eight minus one, which is equal to seven. Finally, for beam 10, we can see that there are total of six reactions in the beam there are four joints that is one two three and four and there is one internal hinge in the beam so m prime will be equal to two the value of dk will be equal to seven so beam has seven degrees of freedom we can see that this beam has two members so if we neglect the actual deformations dk will be seven minus two which is equal to five so this is how we can calculate the value of degrees of freedom or degree of kinematic indeterminacy of any beam. I hope you guys like this video and learned something from this video. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and share this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.